The transfer portal now in the world of the NIL, now that we've got a full year of NIL, of playing season NIL, I mean, uh, under our belts, is anything different? Because, you're, you know, we had we had um, Lane Kiffin on, and he was lamenting the lack of institutional um, guardrails in the NCAA about players and where they're going. And we just saw... Uh, prime take the top recruit uh, in all the land and bring him to an HBCU in Jackson, Mississippi and take him away from Tallahassee as well, even though he told me on the show I didn't take him. He didn't belong to them. And I don't know. That was just a great conversation with Dion. I'm just what the general sense of things, you know, with Caleb Williams going in and then maybe losing his gig in Oklahoma while he went in to the portal. I mean, what what is going on, your general sense of everything in it, college football right now. It's just a it's a lot of volatility in terms of I think there's a couple of things to separate. They're connected, but the NIL stuff, I think when Caleb Williams jumped in the portal, I think a lot of people immediately assume this is going to be go to the highest bidder. Now, I know of some situations that are not related to Caleb Williams where there's a couple of big time transfers who it sounds like that is exactly what's happening. From what I've heard from both coaches and people around Caleb Williams was that this is more who who do I think can de- give me the best chance to be developed so I can hit the ground running when I get to the NFL in two years and be the most prepared. Um, and I don't know how confident he and the people you know he listens to were with the new system there that Jeff Levy was coming in, the new offense coordinator at Oklahoma. Um, now, is that going to be back with Lincoln Riley at, at USC? Obviously, Lincoln Riley's developed three starting NFL quarterbacks now between Baker, Jalen Hurts, and Kyler Murray. I mean, that would seem like the most likely fit. I know there's other people who are going to who are going to take a big swing to try to get them and make their case. But I think when it comes back to the the part that's really interesting as we're talking about the portal, think about it this way: so the guy who ended up jumping to OU. Uh, Dylan Gabriel was a wildly successful quarterback at UCF. He had gotten in the portal. He committed to UCLA. He was supposed to start classes at UCLA on Monday. At some point, Monday afternoon, when Jan- when uh, when Caleb Williams announces he's going in the portal, then all of a sudden, hey, Oklahoma might need a quarterback. By the way, the, the system that Oklahoma now runs – um, that's one that Dylan Gabriel played in at UCF. Dylan Gabriel did not show up at, you know, in his classes at UCLA. Instead, he 180 it, and now will be expected to be the quarterback at OU. And so in this process now, you have a lot of guys who have basically gone through the recruiting process, but now they've gone through and they've gone evaluated in real college football. So you have a lot of players who are weighing their options almost constantly. And I think so it's kind of set – you know, depth charts into chaos because of it. And I think there's just a lot of moving parts to this. Like I said, because of the NIL aspect of it, because of so much uncertainty. And I think for a lot of coaches now, they're going to probably recruit as heavily off the portal, if not more, to kind of restock their, their, their depth charts because I think they don't know as much about the unproven commodities of college recruits as they're coming out of high school. And that's the part that I think is way different. You're going to see a lot less high school players, I think, probably get offered because people are going to have to save room for all the movement that's going on with the free agency from the actual college players in the portal. Yeah, didn't Dion say uh, 20% of his process is just is, is high school recruits no, i think that's what he said he said he had and i think that's not that's not that uncommon texas state hired you know hired texas state landed and signed no high school players last year i mean they wanted to go all in on the portal and i think you're seeing that more and more huh. where you can have guys who are like okay th- why, why would i you know, kind of if you have an NIL deal lined up, wouldn't you rather have the guy who's the proven commodity than some guy who is like evaluated as a four star guy, but you really don't know what you're getting until they've actually done it in the games. So I think everybody's honestly is looking out for their, you know, can they get their next their Joe their own version of Joe Burrow? Joe Burrow was a program changer for LSU. It worked out great. And I think everybody's hoping that that they're going to find some version of that. And coaches don't like this because they they, they they can't count on a four-year commitment from anybody signing a letter of intent anymore? Is that what it is? Yeah, or? And I, yes, and I think it screws up the power of dynamic as it is because now the players 
have way more power than the coaches are comfortable with. A lot of coaches, I'm not, you know, I'm not saying all, but a bunch of coaches were uncomfortable with the NIL because they thought it was going to change the power structure of how their relationships are. So and, outside of somebody like Nick Saban who wins every year and whose facilities are off the charts and whose uh, track record of turning kids out for the NFL uh, professionally is uh, without uh, question, who, what's the type of coach that succeeds in this world? Like, who, like, is it prime? I mean, it, that's what I'm saying. Like somebody who knows how to talk to kids, who also knows how to lay down the law for kids, is respected by kids, um, can, can work the transfer portal, can also create some spot where there's enough buzz, where there's NIL money that you can say, I can't guarantee it, but you will have the opportunity if you ball out to get it. I mean, that's what I'm saying. Like, who, who is the... This is fascinating to me. I mean, like, because it sure ain't, doesn't sound like Urban Meyer, you know, like the iron fist, let's this sort of thing, or like Ryan Day even lost a, a kid out of his uh, quarterback room, right? I mean, so uh, I'm just yeah, trying to. I mean, to... I think on the, on the Ryan Day part of it, I think so much is like, look, they lost Alabama's best receiver, the best receiver in the SEC, Jamison Williams. He wasn't really getting on the field at, at Ohio State because they were so loaded in that receiver room. So right. I, I think. You know, there are some circumstances that are that way. I, I think what is going to play best is the guys who have the track record, not only with transfers, but of developing players for the NFL. That's ultimately what they wanted. I mean, look, for a, for a, a window, LSU had that where they were able to go into the portal, whether it was whether it was Joe Burrow or, you know, the best kicker that they ever had, or, you know, they're getting players because they see it worked. Well, then all of a sudden it, after a while, it gets stale, and it's like I think people are looking for where is the best fit for me. And if a coach can sell somebody on, hey, this worked out great for that guy, I think then it starts because right now I think everything is so so tailored to what is the depth chart, what is the, what is the plan you have for me, right? And so you know I would expect Lincoln Riley because his roster is a mess. You know, what he inherited is not a good situation. They were a bad team. They are going to be selling the heck out of their NIL opportunities. I know USC is doing that. You have a coach who's, who's developed a lot of NFL players now, and there's opportunity. I am sure they are, you know, they are going to be all in on making uh, the portal an attractive spot for people to come out of there to go to USC. I mean, look across town. UCLA has actually done that. You know, there's a running back who turned out to be a star from UCLA who started out at your alma mater. Um, Zach Charbonnet turned out to be a terrific player. We've seen them do that a lot where it's like, hey, we want a guy who's who's maybe more mature and ready for another chance. And a lot of, quite honestly, a lot of kids maybe come back if they didn't start out. You know, if they were high school kids from Southern California, maybe they went someplace else and maybe they're looking to come back home again. So I think what, you know, the L.A. schools are definitely in the big market, and I think they've actually, you know, kind of managed it pretty well to this point of how they're trying to sell it to kids. Hey, you watched all the way to the end. Thanks for that. Watch more right here.